Hello and welcome back to another Dev Dash episode. In the last one, we did the animation that you can see here on screen. And since the last episode, I've been getting a lot of feedback on how it actually looks more like a put shot. I think that's how you call it from the Olympic sport where you just like push it away rather than an actual throw. So before we actually get into implementing it into the engine, I'll have to adjust it and fix it so the elbow leads the shot and that he actually throws it instead of playing some sort of Olympic sport. But I hope you still enjoy it. All right, so previously what we had here was how that the hand looks leading the throw. And now I've just done some quick adjustments. We'll probably go back and switch it up and make it better later, but this is what we got right now. So right now his elbow and the shoulder is leading it. And then his hand kind of between this frame and this frame catches up and then extends. So hopefully this is more of a throw than uh, that we did last episode. Uh, but with this animation, uh, let's get into the actual engine. Okay, so let's get our layer open. So the first thing I want to do is to actually just add the throw state into the actual logic. I have a lot of different states here. So right now I'm uh, hard coding in the key inputs. So that's another thing I need to do later is to actually implement uh, bindable keys but we'll stick with uh, hard coding it for now. All right, so now we have it so that if you press the throw key while you're in your default state, which is just running or standing still, uh, you'll go into the throw state, but we don't actually see anything happen. What will happen now is just that the game will freeze. It's just, you won't be able to move anymore. So what I want to have is uh, we want to import the sprite into the engine so we can see that something happens. Now we need to turn this into uh, an actual animation and not a long, long frame. It's 42 by 42. There we go. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, that's a bit late, slow. Maybe a bit fast. How about that? That works. Now we also need to, let me see here. So the origin point is like at the wick. So we need to put the origin at the same place here. Otherwise it'll be no good. Yeah, I think this will, I think this is okay. I uh, actually have my entire animation logic in the draw event. And I later found out that apparently uh, Logic in the draw event is a lot slower than in the step event, so I'll eventually have to move this over to a script, but uh, it's the step event. But for now, it's it just stays in the draw event. But I'll I promise I'll fix it. Now we need to do the same thing as we did it there. What is this called? Nothing. Okay. Maybe we need to figure out what this is. Let's call it down air attack. I don't know what I call it. Maybe stomp or something. Let's make a new region. Mm, sprite index equals. Did we actually name it when we should have named it? No, we didn't. We just called it Sprite Idle 1. Mm. And then we want to have this little thing. If state previous is now equal state image index equals zero. So this is just that. Otherwise, the frame count that you're on in the previous animation will carry over to the new animation, which will mean that he's not going to start winding up the throw. He, if you're in the running animation, which has a lot of frames, you might even be at the end of the throw as soon as you get, go into the state. So this is just to uh, reset the animation. And now, if everything is uh, set up correctly, we compile now and press the throw key. We should see the animation infinitely. Okay, let's try it out. Oh, another thing, uh, as you can see, I've finally re-added an article animation. Oh, now he breathes when he's standing still. Let's see if we can throw. <laughs> it's the first frame of the animation, at least. Well, there's something for you. So something's wrong. 
Did we set the state to the wrong thing or something? Thorv Ro. I have some big issues spelling that word. And yes, I should change this to an enum. I know. But right now we're we've got the mass strings and then yeah. But if you see anything that you don't think should be there and or that you think I could do better, or why just point it out and uh, let me know in the comments. Okay, second time is the charm. Wow. Would you look at that? Okay, so that works now. Fantastic. So this is the eighth frame, which is going to be frame seven in code, which is stupid. It should say frame seven here. They go um, in code. They index everything like they should from zero. But in this animation view, they index it from one. So you got to subtract one whenever you you which frame you're thinking about. Okay, so number seven. So what I want to do now is to make it so that if you're not holding the throw key anymore, you're going to skip to the part where he's actually throwing. And then we're going to do it so that as long as you hold the throw key in, he's going to stop at the charge pose. And uh, then we're going to add some uh, math to calculate the strength based on how long you've hold, held down the thingy. Okay, so now he should pause at the charge pose if you hold down the throw key. You should also skip to the throw animation if you just press it. And when he's done with the throw, he's gonna go back to the default state. Okay, so none of that worked. Oh, fucking hell. Uh, if I hold it, he just throws infinitely, which I guess... Yeah, I mean, that's probably that's because it goes back to default state, but then instantly goes back into the throw. But it it uh, it skips to the throw instantly. So that's good. If I just tap it, he throws instantly like he should. He skips the wind up, he just throws instantly. Is it because it, Game Maker maybe can't handle this logic? Maybe I need to do this. I don't know. Let's see. Still ain't working. Okay. There we go. We've got it. Now we can hold it. We can throw. We can just throw instantly. We can do a short wind up. We can do a long one. Fantastic. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is to actually split up the two animations. So for this next part, let's go into Asprite. So what we want to do now is actually to split these into two different animations. We want to have it so that the top part uh, can move freely. This part here. We want it so this part here can move freely and independently from the bottom section here. So you could imagine that his feet are planted and then he will uh, look in the direction that he is aiming. Just like the soldier guy with the gun, but he's just aiming with his hands. So my plan is that we're just going to isolate the top part here. And so I'll erase the bottom part and then we'll do the opposite with the bottom part and erase the upper part. And then I'll uh, do some uh, sprite work, try and uh, make it look nice when it rotates between them. So an issue that I might or will run into is that in some cases uh, the back arm here is probably going to render over the front legs and both of the legs just because this sprite will be rendered on top of the legs. So ideally or in the future what I will do is that I'll split this thing into three different sprites so I'll have the back arm at the way back then I'll have the legs and then at the top I'll have this upper body with the front arm. But it's just a visual thing so I'm pushing that back to polish or whatever I have time to do it. Right now I just want to implement the feature and have it looking kind of okay so I can see and play test and let some other people test it out. But the actual rotation of the upper body it's an actual important part of the, of the feature because it gives the player some sort of feedback in which direction the player is currently aiming. So I want that to actually work. Alright, so we've got the uh, 
full upper body hair. Now we just want to do the same thing with the lower one. I know this might look silly, but my plan is that uh, by having a bit of the lower body visible here, what I'll be able to do is to make it so that even if he's leaning back like this, you'll see some, some of the shirt being exposed here. Or if the player is leaning forward like this, you'll see a bit of curvature on the, the hip here. So that's why I extended this part. And I'll do it on all the rest of the frames too. Alright, so that's the lower part done, and if we merge them, it'll still look exactly like the animation that we used to have. Fantastic, so let's export it again as a different ones. Alright, so that's the lower body done, and since this is the one that actually going to be planted on the ground, this is the one we replaced the old animation with, and then for the other one, we actually don't want the origin to be here because then it will rotate around the feet area. What we actually want is for the aiming one to rotate around the torso. So that origin point is going to be a bit different from this one. All right, so I was pretty happy with how the uh, enemy kind of was aiming, how that looked. So I want to take a look at that guy and see how I made that. Where kind of where I put the origin point on that torso. All right, so I put it kind of like at chest height, but this guy is just moving his arms while Candlehead is gonna move his entire upper body. I think we're gonna have to lower the rotation point for Candlehead, but a little bit of back on the torso, near to the back shoulder, good information. So probably somewhere around here. We'll, we'll start here and see what happens. All right, so here we have the aiming code for the uh, enemy guy. So my plan is that I'm just gonna take it and adjust it so it works for Candlehead. So right now when we're implementing this, just planning on implementing it so the aim point will be the mouse. And then later I'll implement it so you can aim both with uh, arrow keys and with the controller. some big dumb moves if direction equals one then draw it with a one <laughs> and the other case it could be is that it could be minus one and in that case draw it with Jesus. I don't see any other difference Jesus Christ I don't have the Y and X offsets defined here in this I need to borrow it back. I must have been tired when I wrote that code. Or it's just artist code. Could be that. Let's replace that with direction. Thank you. <laughs> right. I just did a lot of shit and I hope everything works. Probably, we'll probably get a few errors. Okay. It runs. How about when I press V? Okay. Okay. I see some slight some slight tilting. It's interesting. I'll say that. It's not perfect, that's for sure. Oh, I know why. No, I don't. Ah, I had Y on the x-axis. That was probably the issue, maybe. Hopefully, we'll see. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's good. I mean, almost good, not really. Okay, so he, he's looking in the right direction. I mean, like horizontally, the right direction. He's looking at the mouse, but then he he, he doesn't mirror when he's going over to the right side here. So that's, I know why we need to do that. Okay. Okay, 
I mean, that's completely broken when we're on this side. Okay, so let's see if, what happens if we do this. We'll just test stuff now. Okay, so now, now maybe this is why I did it the way I did it. Because I couldn't get it to work otherwise. Wait, doesn't that mean it's, it should always be one? If this is one, then that should be negative one. If it's not one, then it should be, yeah, it should always be negative one. And then this should just be the direction. Okay, so big brain moment. Okay, so this should always be negative one. How about that? <laughs> should probably fix it in the other code when we get this to work too. Yes, just like I envisioned it. Okay, so he, he he's looking, he's looking at in the right direction. Is is <sighs> okay. You know what? The enemy is rendered or like drawn in the opposite direction of Candlehead. So maybe it's just that uh, when it comes to Candlehead, it should just be one here direction there instead of negative one. Because the negative one here was to compensate for the other di different, the wrong direction. Okay. So now, now, now that's wrong. That's so wrong. Okay, now I'm getting similar results on both sides, which is good. It looks down when it's supposed to look up, and it looks up when it's supposed to look down, and the same, the exact same issue on both sides. It's exactly how I want it. I mean, it's closer to what I want, at least. Could it be that I did it the wrong direction here? Could it be that? Did I? It's the thing you're aiming at first. And then your own position. That's how I did it. So it's, it's trying to aim down when I'm aiming up because it's from the mouse perspective. That makes sense. So then we just wanna. And now we're just gonna bada beam, bada boom, have it working. Let's zoom in for this. Wow. Okay, that, that ain't. That ain't exactly perfect when it comes to how it's uh, looking. But he's aiming in the exact direction I want him to. <laughs> okay, so that's not looking... <laughs> that's not looking great. The, this is just the uh, positioning of the sprite. And I, I, I can... that's something I can adjust. Surprise! It's a new day and I've been doing a lot. I ate dinner, I slept, I had lunch, I am about to eat dinner again. The magic of video editing. Kinda of forgot what I was supposed to do yesterday. Alright, yeah, draw the thing, maybe. So this this prevents uh, it to... It, it prevents the game from drawing the bottom part at the end. And then in here we can just, before we actually draw the rotated sprite, we can just insert draw self. And now his torso should be rendered on top. Okay, let's see, come on. Yes. So when it's like this, he should re the torso should move forward a lot. It's, it's good when it's like this, it's just a bit too high. But what we want is for it to just increase in height, and then we want want it to move way forward here. I think that's what we need right now. Let's see. We're just experimenting now. I just want the sprite's uh, height to differ, depending on the aim angle. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now, now it does it. Okay, so now we just want the thing to happen. We just want the torso to move forward when we aim down. Alright, so after a lot of uh, tinkering and adjusting the uh, position of the spike, uh, we've got this.
Next thing, we actually need something that we can uh, throw. So what this line does is that it sets the throw speed between the minimum and the maximum based on where the uh, where in the animation you are. I'll have to see if you can uh, sheath this by tapping at the end, but we'll see. Hopefully this will do something. This would it would be, it'd be really cool if this actually threw something now. For every error, we get one step closer to actually figure the. For every error, we get one step closer to actually figuring figure. Figuring, figuring this shit out. Okay, I know what the issue is. I know what the issue is. I mixed up the things. Game makers, Y axis is the opposite of, of this. So we just do uh, that. And now, now we should be able to throw stuff. Come on, come on, come on. Wow. Yeah, so uh, there's an issue because uh, the actual sprite was thrown like this. So he's aiming a bit up. Looks like he's aiming a bit higher than he actually is. I need to adjust for that. I mean, that's probably something I'll do uh, later, not on camera, because uh, we're just trying to get this thing done here. But it works. We can throw. So the final thing I would like to implement before we wrap this up, I know it's a bit rough, but I feel like you gain the most out of just hanging out, seeing the bulk of the development and then the fine tuning and the polish and all that, that takes a lot of time, it's just boring. I think we're just gonna skip that part. Let me do that on my own. But I do wanna make one last thing and that is to create an arc that shows you where you're supposed to throw. It will also kind of help me with debugging and figuring out how to match up the sprite angle with the actual arc of the throw. So for this, I'm thinking we could just have like a really small circle and then we just repeat these dotted circles in an arc and uh, that way you'll see where you're supposed to throw. So what we check here is if we start on the player with the X and then we get the speed of the throw. And then uh, while the position of where we want to place the dot is not inside a wall, then we are gonna draw a circle on that spot. And then now we want to move that circle along the arc path that it's gonna follow. And then it's gonna redo this check until it hits a wall. So now we need to adjust the, the TX and the TYs based on the speed. So we also add a grav here because we need to add the gravity. In the future I um, might have to readjust it so it's actually the gravity based on the entity that you're throwing. Maybe you're throwing something that is really heavy or something that is really light, like a balloon, I don't know. But for now we're just going to use the same gravity as the player. You might have noticed that I don't use delta time either. Uh, that's something I'm going to implement. As I said, I really like to just get stuff dirty and done quick and then actually go in and fix stuff. But I do have delta time in the game. We, we just don't program with it in mind right now. It's not... It's definitely not what I intended it to be. It, it is a, a path. It's a straight line, like a laser. But uh, I was expecting... I was expecting some sort of arc to it. I know why. <laughs> We're supposed to do it like that, and then T speed Y plus equals grab. That's how we're supposed to do it. Okay, how about now? Yes. Okay, so I should probably adjust the spacing. I can do some, so I could uh, do some uh, normalization on the distance or something. But that's something that I'll have to figure out how to do. That's, it's not exact. Oh, actually it is. It's following the arc path perfectly. Cool. 
It should probably disappear too. But it's doing what I intended it to do. What I wanted to have. I, I think we should have less dots. For sure. That's interesting. That's cool. It's it's what I wanted it to do. Okay, so let's let's just um let's remove it when it's actually when you're actually throwing. So it just shows when you're aiming. All right, cool. Um, thank you so much for watching this episode of Dev Dash. I'm gonna keep polishing on this and making sure that it looks nice and works like I want it to. But I think this is where we say goodbye for today. If you're interested in the final product and if I've done any progress, you can check out my Twitter where I post stuff about the game regularly. And uh, let me know what you thought of following along with uh, me actually coding instead of doing pixel art. I know a lot of people enjoy me doing pixel art, uh, but let me know what you thought about this. It's interesting to hear your thoughts. And with that, I say thank you and goodbye.